a new world order. They want it all. Last night, ladies and gentlemen, we left off talking about the uh, symptomatic condition known as Masonic apoplexy in the 19th century, and today it is called zombieism. Let's continue by looking at the modern Catholic Church under Popes John the 23rd and Paul the 6th and uh, Pope John Paul the Second, which taking a leaf, ladies and gentlemen, from the Elizabethan Anglican Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, announced publicly an enlightened new universal reform born of Vatican Council II's spirit of renewal and openness. Henceforward to be marked by a new reverence for lay involvement, dialogue, and catch this, democracy. And you hear people like Pat Robertson and Paul Crouch echoing these same sentiments, in fact calling for the Pope to take leadership over the Christian church worldwide, including Protestantism. How can that be? For Protestant means to protest against the Catholic Church. Something is happening here, ladies and gentlemen, that you had better pay very close attention to. Now, remember, this is not a religious broadcast, and I am not criticizing your religion, whatever religion you belong to. I am merely calling your attention to the manipulation of all of us by the leaders of some of these religious movements and churches. Now, just as Cranmer sneered at the common peasants in England who dared to protest the repression of the traditional liturgy, Cranmer had claimed they no longer wanted the Vatican II Catholic Church in the name of new freedoms also suppressed against the wishes of the common people the old liturgy. They just turned it around. It was outlawed, and a modern liturgy designed by the Freemason Annabelle Bugnini and Love, spelled L-U-H-V, rhetoric, to justify the suppression in the name of the people's wishes, followed it. Cranmer murdered en masse the English Catholic peasants who rose in defense of the old liturgy. Cranmer massacred them and crushed their peasant uprising, which became known as the Western Rising. It was the time, in fact, when the old Knights Templars, seeking their revenge, again took control of the Knights Hospitallers, now known as the Knights of Malta, or more correctly, the Ancient and Military Order of the Knights of Malta which is, in fact, the militia of the Pope. Later, the infiltration of the Vatican by the Masonic Order was complete by the Propaganda II Lodge in Italy, which was created by the Central Intelligence Agency, working in concert with the Mafia. And this is all documented in Piers Compton's excellent work, fully documented and sourced, known as the Broken Cross. This Protestant Inquisition is seldom mentioned nowadays, in keeping with the massive strategy of tarring only the Catholic Church with the brush of Inquisitor, and thereby building up the Protestantism as the exclusive true Christianity. Not so. They have presented this false picture to the world because Protestantism was the chosen vehicle ladies and gentlemen, through which Freemasonry infiltrated Christianity and through which it is destroying the church today. Protestants, not just Catholics, persecuted and executed thousands of Anabaptists, which were the forerunners of today's Mennonites and Amish peoples. Michael Servetus, a dissenting mathematician, was burned at the stake in Switzerland by Calvinists. 
According to contemporary adherents of paganism, the 16th century covens of Wicca sided with the Protestant Queen Elizabeth against the Catholics in appreciation of her having awarded Satanist John Dee, the founder of Freemasonry in England, high office in her government. And for that, you can look in The Pinnacle and the Wand by Howard Rheingold by The Whole Earth Review, Spring 1992, page 61. The French Revolution of 1789, which was also known as the Reign of Terror, was a Masonic war against the Catholic Church and the Catholic people of France, a war conducted with all the instruments of torture and all the atrocities of an Inquisition. The Masonic hanging judge, Jean-Baptiste Carrier, ordered the execution of 13,000 Catholics who were drowned in the Loire River in boats especially designed just for that purpose. And on December the 23rd, 1793, the Masonic General Francois Westerman attacked the Catholic village of Savigny, killing hundreds of Catholic women and children. Westerman bragged that he had trampled children under horses' feet and massacred women who will no longer give birth to brigands. His exact words. In 1794, another of the generals of the French Revolution, the Freemason Louis-Marie Toureau, ordered the slaughter of 109 Catholic children in the village of luc sur -Bouillon. In the western section of France, in the area around Nantes, known as the Vendée, hundreds of thousands of Catholics, hundreds of thousands of Catholics were slaughtered by the Masonic government of the French Revolution. Thousands of their religious leaders were also killed in Paris, and other areas for their opposition to the suzerainty of the Masonic cryptocracy. A great deal, ladies and gentlemen, has changed since then, however. Today, the Vatican is as firmly in the pocket of the Freemasons as are many Protestant institutions in this country. Most memorable is the recent takeover of the Southern Baptist Church in its entirety by the Masonic Brotherhood. It is not secret. It has been openly admitted. Pope John Paul II, presented in the Masonic media as a strict conservative, is actually an agent of one world, New Age, Luciferianism. But don't just climb on the Catholic Church, folks. Almost all of the organized church bodies that exist in the world today are in the clutches of Mystery Babylon. In 1986, Pope John Paul II convened a World Council of Religions, including African devil worshippers, Buddhists, and Muslims, at a church named after the Apostle Peter in Assisi, Italy. According to the New York Times of October 28, 1986, I quote, the Buddhists, led by the Dalai Lama, quickly converted the altar of the Church of San Pietro by placing a small statue of the Buddha atop the tabernacle and setting prayer scrolls and incense burners around it. End quote. The Dalai Lama of Tibet is revered as a god-king by his followers. Talk about the abomination of desolation. Sincere Christians of all denominations condemned the Assisi Rite. Protestant leader Dr. Carl McIntyre called it, and I quote, the greatest single abomination in church history, end quote. Catholic Bishop Marcel Lefebvre labeled Pope John Paul II's actions in Assisi, quote, the supreme imposture, the culminating insult to our Lord, a diabolical act, end quote. Thus we observe the conflict between truths perceived deep within and lies people force themselves to assent to in public. In the name of the people, the wishes of the people are overthrown. Is there a reason this double mind has been induced? 
If someone is making us deliberately mentally ill, it may be that this is done so that we will look to that someone for healing and relief. Into the double mind breach step the elite managers of the Masonic Hermetic Academy, who through symbol and word manipulation can temporarily unite our persona and anima, thus lifting an immense burden from us, relieving us, if you will, of our stress and confusion. Oh, you have a problem? We have an answer. Oh, a building blew up in Oklahoma City. My goodness, let us protect you, for this could happen to any building. Let us take away your arms and ammunition so that you cannot protect yourself. <laughs> let us furnish your security. Trust us. We will be good to you. We will never become despotic or tyrannical. We would never, ever murder 86 people in a small Christian church in Waco, Texas, just because they had not paid a $200 tax for a supposed automatic weapon, which they never had in the first place. And, of course, we would never shoot and murder a mother unarmed, who was guilty of no crime, wanted for nothing, standing in a doorway holding her baby to her breast. We will protect you. Give us your guns. Give us your arms. Let us take care of you. We will save you from yourselves. Isn't that, isn't that what we hear? The double mind breach. They're relieving us of our stress and confusion. And this function can easily, ladies and gentlemen, assume in the minds of the subject, patients, the people, a godlike status. I submit this status is characterized by the use of the term they in our society, as in, why don't they come up with a tire that will never wear out or a cure for cancer? As in, they have a cure for cancer, but the doctors would lose too much money, so they have suppressed it. Or, they say the CIA killed Kennedy, and he was fornicating with Maryland throughout his presidency. They write the movie scripts and the billboard slogans. They have the money and the power and control of the illusion machine. They can cure cancer or withhold the cure. They reveal the secrets behind assassinations and scandals. What will they do next? How will they program the show today? Let's sit back, watch, and find out. And since we choose to refuse to genuinely heal the rift between the two sides of our mentality by the tough means of repudiating our lying public persona and taking action on the understanding of our true self, we relinquish autonomy to those who make it appear that they can heal us at no great cost or trouble on our part. You don't have to be responsible. You don't have to take any risk. You don't even have to get up off your couch. We will heal you. We will provide you security. We will take care of you. But never mind that they are also the ones who implanted the rift in the first place, a la Hegel, and the dialectic is working upon us all the time. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, we have little or no power. We cannot act. We cannot invent. We cannot cure. We must wait and see what happens. We must see what they make happen. And if you believe that, you're already dead and buried. And if you want proof that that's not true, I am living proof. The final coffin in the nail of our free will is the fact that we ourselves know in our heart of hearts that what I just told you is not true. It is false. 
and I have proven it false over and over and over again. And they told me that no one would listen. I drove thousands of miles to talk to three people in someone's living room until there were groups listening. When they said I couldn't write a book because no one would publish it, I wrote a book and it was published. And it became the underground bestseller for over six years in a row. When they said I could not get on radio, no one would allow me to have a voice on radio, I created my own broadcast and paid for it myself. And when they said no newspaper in this country prints the truth, I started my own newspaper and named it Truth, Veritas, which is Latin for truth, and send it free to everybody in Washington, D.C. So they know that I know and that I'm printing it. And it's the fastest growing newspaper in the nation. And when they began their attack upon the patriots and constitutionists and Christians in this country, after the bombing of the Oklahoma Muir Federal Building, I set my people into motion to investigate and discover the truth of that bombing. And I hounded my station chief, Michelle Marie Moore, until she wrote a book on the findings of our investigation. And I can assure you, it is turning Oklahoma up on its ear. You see, it is we, it is we, the people who have the power and the responsibility. And we could crush them tomorrow morning if we but chose to do it. You see, they are only an illusion, every bit as ephemeral as the patter of a carnival sideshow bunko artist beckoning to us from the other side of the hoochie-coochie tent. And that is the truth. They practice magic. Magic is nothing but the art of illusion. And if they can fog your brain and dazzle you with baffling BS, and if they can desensitize you with flooding you with violence on a daily basis over and over and over again on television and in movies and on radio. They're practicing magic. Through the art of illusion, they are destroying your ability to act and to think and to perform. They are taking away your power, but it is not really they who take it away. It is you who give it You give it by your participation in this magic act. But you see, some people know that we have the power. And some people know, they know that we could crush them tomorrow morning if we chose. But they don't want to, you see, because if we overthrew them tomorrow, we would have to write our own scripts and be responsible and take care of ourselves and take risks and provide for our own securities. We would have to heal ourselves. We would have to admit the colossal waste and loss and destruction of the past years which our laziness and folly have made possible. We would have to experience the pain of being alive and responsible. We would have to start acting like men and women instead of as children, as slaves, and as weaklings as we are prone to do today on a daily basis. The Hermetic Academy, being great scholars of human nature, know this and depend upon our ignorance, apathy, and stupidity and our willingness to go along with this magic act in order to enslave us and in control. Take us 
by the strings, the puppet strings, and when they play the tune, we will dance. Boy, I bet that's enough to make you sleep well tonight, but I'm not finished, ladies and gentlemen, so don't go away. I will be right back. 